so I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night and decided to buy an EMG system and do some research. This is wrist flexion. There's a few flexor muscles, but I was aiming for the palmaris longus, which is very involved in this motion. This is radial deviation, created largely from the extensor carpi radialis longus. For this experiment, we also wired up the clavicular head of the deltoid, which essentially helps lift the shoulder into the ball. This measurement will be important as we move forward with our EMG studies, as we'll use it to overlap actions to form a bigger picture of arm action. So be sure to subscribe for what's to come. By the way, don't let all this technical garble confuse or scare you. I promise by the end of this video, we'll have some practical advice to help you hit a better forehand. And by the way, if you're not familiar with surface EMG equipment, it's just a sensor that goes over the muscle you'd like to monitor, and it detects the signal emanated when that muscle becomes active. We'll have an idea of the strength, timing, and length of contractions. Nothing's perfect, but this can certainly give us some insight into what's happening with a player when playing tennis. For example, one thing I learned from this study is that in both types of forehands, a more classical forehand and a modern forehand, the muscles in the forearm work as stabilizers even if not working to create action in the wrist. You don't actually just want your arm to flop like a wet noodle through the whole stroke. So for this anecdotal experiment, I wanted to look at wrist action for a classical forehand where the wrist stays more fixed versus what we're seeing more of in high level tennis where the wrist is an added link in the kinetic chain. We'll refer to this as a modern forehand. So I went out, wired myself up, and struck what I feel was a pretty good representation of these. Here's my more classic fixed wrist forehand. And here's my more modern forehand. So let's take a look at the differences. The positives with the modern forehand seem that you can create just as much or even more force with a more compact swing. In fact, to keep your body segment sequencing properly, it's required to have a shorter backswing for this than a classical forehand. Given how little time pro players have, this time-saving benefit makes a lot of sense. Now the negatives. The diagram clearly shows a greater and more violently initiated force on the wrist and forearm. I think this is a fair comparison considering I tried to hit both with the same effort. It certainly doesn't take a genius to see that wrist and forearm injuries are becoming more prevalent in the game. You ever hear someone say, my wrist are too weak? Well, there's probably something else going on in the stroke because everyone's wrists are weak. We're really just dealing with tendons when we get into this body segment. The wrist is actually pretty fragile and the muscles controlling it in the forearm certainly aren't the biggest muscles in the body either. Also, because of this lag where the angle of the wrist and forearm decreases and then has to catch up, means you're looking at a shot that requires more timing. Not just prior to the hit, where we have to time this catching up of the wrist, but also, since this requires a very loose arm, the wrist flexes quicker, pulling the face away from contact. So if you're early, you could pull the ball. We can definitely see this looseness by how quickly contraction drops off with the modern forehand. These things combined is why we often see a lower follow through on the modern forehand. Now, obviously for a classical forehand, it's gonna take more time to execute the shot, but you're gonna put less stress on your arm and it's gonna require less timing. So just make sure you weigh the pros and cons before deciding which type of forehand is right for you. Also keep in mind, as in the instance of Roger Federer, you can always add this later once you're timing in straight to become proficient. Having been in player development now for over 20 years, I can say I've certainly had players end up with an extra link that I never intentionally taught them. I simply tell them to be loose and keep the swing short. How extreme they take it from there, I leave up to them. If a player is doing it the right way and not feeling pain, I certainly wouldn't tell them not to. A couple other quick notes on whichever forehand you decide to use. One, be sure to still initiate your swing with your racket high. This is needed for options, disguise, and even movement. Whether the drop is serving as a means of momentum into the upward swing, or to just assist you with stretching the forearm out, you'll be better off for it. Also, make sure your racket does drop below the ball and hooded or slightly closed. This is because your arm works on a radius, so when you lift your arm, you'll create a proper racket phase of contact. This way you won't have to use extra muscles to try to flip the racket phase through the hit. This is going to hurt racket head speed, consistency, and also put more stress on your arm. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Which forehand do you prefer? Have you experienced injury from trying to force a forearm pre-stretch? Also, what should I look at next with my EMG system? I'd love to know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.